guys, it's Katie here from Bella Creativa and I have got a little special uh, SVG um, creation that I would like to share with you today. I have been making these cute little boxes, um, book boxes actually, and um, I've created an SVG file for them and um, there's two types of little um, boxes here and you can make them in different sizes. So there's this type here which is... Um, a box and it's just done up with this um, little bit of seam binding here and what I really love about them is when you open them it's got this really nice edge around here and it also has a cute little pocket here for your little gift tag if you wanted to use it as a gift box uh, so there's this one and it's got the square, um, a square spine here and this is the same kind of square um, spine or flat I should say probably flat spine square spine um, and this has got a little velcro um, opening here and this one opens out and again it's got this little um, um, gift uh, card holder or whatever you want it to be and it's quite a nice deep little box here with this really nice edge around it and I think they look really um, cute and um, smart so then there this is um, another one of those this one's done up with a bow again I like the bow <laughs> and it opens up and this time I, I put this fancy paper in here so I didn't worry about putting in a, um, a little gift card holder but again it's got this nice deep box where you can you could use it to store things. I think how cute would that be to store things in it? Um, and you could have them all piled up together. Or you could use it as a little gift box uh, if what you were giving was just quite small. So there's that one. And then this one is the last one. And this has got um, sort of a rolled um, or round spine on it. So this one, when we open it up, opens up like so. And so it has this round spine here, but again, it has this cute little box style. So I thought we might make um, those on camera today. And so let me just put those to the side. So they, um, the way I made them is make by making scalable vector graphic files, which are files that you can use in your electronic cutting machines, like a Cricut, a Silhouette, or a Brother Scan and Cut. And uh, so the files themselves um, are in here and there's six of them and the blue green ones here are the actual pieces themselves and then all the pink pieces are the mats that go with them. So there's six files to make um, this, uh, um, this little book box up and that's uh, for both of the uh, square or flat spines and also the rounded spines so all six files will make both of those styles for you so these are all the pieces that we're going to use now these are going to be a little freebie uh, but the only way i know how to share the files with you is through facebook so i am going to load these onto my facebook group page so if you would like to um, make your own book boxes just go to my Facebook group it's called Bella Creativa Divas and um, send a request and join up and then you'll find these files all ready to go in the file section of that Facebook page Facebook group page and I will put the link in the description box down below so that you can head straight over there and do that so free completely free for you and so let's um, I thought what we do is we'd make them make a couple and then um, when uh, we've done that I might show you how to manipulate them in I can do it in the Cricut design space because I use a Cricut um, but hopefully you'll be able to transfer the, that idea over to the software that your electronic cutting machine uses if you're not using a Cricut so I have cut out some pieces here and I thought I'll just go through and show you all the pieces that we have um, from this SVG file. I should also say when you download the SVG files from my um, Facebook page it will come with a PDF and the PDF will have 
pictures of all of the files in them so that you can easily refer to them. And I've given every single piece an alphanumeric number um, or label so you'll know which piece I'm referring to. And in that um, PDF there's also this cutting guide here. And this cutting guide will tell you which element um, or piece you need and how many of those, what the mat is that goes with that and how many of those you need. And that's for making the square spine book and also the round one, the actual little box itself inside, what pieces make up that little pocket for your gift card and also the piece that you can um, cut out to make the little clasp or the clasp closure. So that is all part of the um, in the, a PDF that comes with the SVG files. So let's start, shall we? And so the first thing that I've done is cut out two, let me just grab these pieces here, two of these A1 pieces and that's the, um, and I've cut those out of chipboard. So that's those two pieces there, um, two A1s out of chipboard and I can cut those on my cutting machine, but if you can't, don't fear, you can also just cut them out of um, cut them out of cardstock and then use them as um, templates and just trace around them and then cut it out with your cutting, you know, a, the blade, a cutting blade tool thing, you know what I mean. Right, so I've got those in here and I can just slide those in there. So I've cut out two of these. A1 pieces and then I've also cut out of that chipboard um, one of the B1 spines so this is for the square or flat spine book that we're going to make and then I have cut out one of these pieces of A2 which is the wrap that we're going to put around these and that's this piece here so and I've so I've cut that out of some um, scrapbook paper and then I have cut out one of the A3 pieces that's also out of scrapbook paper, that's this piece here. And that's going to be our inside, um, inside the box piece of paper. And then we're going over to the actual box um, pieces themselves. So for this one I have cut out, I've got these the wrong way around I think. I've cut out one piece of D1. And I've cut that out of cardstock, and this cardstock is about 180 GSM, 65 to 70 pound cardstock. This one's actually Recollections. And I just write um, what that number is, um, what, you know, what that piece is on it, so I know once I've cut it out what it actually is. So I've cut out one D1, then I have cut out two E1s, which are these ones here. And I've inked on some of those lines, really just so you can see them easily, um, but you can also ink them up too to make them look a bit distressed if you like. So I've cut out two of those. And then I have cut out two of the E2s and two of the E3s, and they're the mats for this. So I want to mat these, so I have two of those. E2s and then two of the E3s which are also the mats and they're just a touch shorter. So I've cut out two of each of those, Oops. pick those up, pop them to the side. Then I have cut out two of the F1 pieces and that's these little guys here. Again I have the cardstock and I've inked around the edges and that makes it much easier to see the score lines. And then I have cut out two of the F2 pieces and two of the F3 pieces and they are the mats here for that um, these uh, F1 pieces here, F2 and F3 to go with F1. I have also cut out this piece here which is D3, this piece here and that's the bit that goes around the top of our little um, box to make it look smart. Then this is the pocket for the gift pocket um, if you want to put a gift tag in here. So this piece is G1, which is this one here. And then I have also cut out a G2, which is the mat that goes on top of here, like so. And then finally, I have cut out this piece here, which is D2, which I should have showed you before, but that D2 here is the mat that goes on this D1. So that's everything that I've cut out for the square box. So let's make that. So I'll put this to the side. I'm going to get out my mat for gluing purposes because I can get a bit messy. And we can
can make this square box to start with. So this is my mat that um, was what I'm going to wrap my, my card in. So this my card, my cover. So this is the A2 piece. And then I need my chipboard pieces, which I've got here, three of those. And I'm simply going to line those up on this piece of paper and then glue them down. So I'm using this um, Helmars Tiger Grip. It's what I can get in Australia and I've just put it in this little um, container here, but you use what you like. So what I want to do is center these on this mat as best I can, leaving a little gap in between each of the pieces, but not too much of a gap. And when I'm happy with where I think it should go, I'm just going to draw around it and so if I knock it, which I'm bound to, I can just easily place that down again. Right, okay, so now I'm just going to glue those pieces down. And this is just um, going to be much like wrapping a book cover. If you were um, maybe covering your books for school or something like that. I'm just going to line that up on my little marks there, press it down, slide that over a little bit. It's not perfect. And the same with my spine. And I'm going to put this one down here. So the beauty of uh, SVG files, of course, is that they come in this particular size, but you can size them up or down to suit you. So the size that you're looking at here makes this size box, which I should probably mention, this size box here, which is uh, 10 centimeters wide, which is about four inches by 15 centimeters long or high which is six inches and then we have about a one and a half inch spine which is nearly four centimeters so that's the size they come in but if I put everything on my Cricut design space and select all and um, and then I can decrease it in size and make a little one like this or I could make a much bigger one so you know you can make any size you like but just for today, I thought I would go ahead and make it in the size that it will come to you in if you go ahead and download the SVG files. So I'll just line that up there. And then I'm just going to flip it over, make sure it's really well stuck down. So I think these make really great little gift boxes, but I also thought they'd just be cute. <laughs> just as little sort of ornaments or so, something like that on the bookshelf. Or I was thinking I could keep some of my crafty bits and pieces in, in the small ones. And that'd be cute. There are all sorts of things you could do with them. So I'm just going to mitre the edges around here with my really grotty scissors that everything is sticking to. Just throw those little bits here away, if I can pick them up. And I'm just going to bend the end, bend the um, paper over to get it to um, bend nicely. So the short ends, like so. Okay. Now, all I'm going to do is just uh, put some glue on here. I'm going to put some, make sure I get some glue down that edge there and then along here. And I'm just going to fold it over and push it down. And uh, if you haven't seen me craft before, you'll, you won't know, but I'm really bad at using too much glue because uh, I'm forever worried that I'm not using enough so I end up using too much. So I'm just going to do this all the way around and this is for the square um, or flat spine and then this 
von hier. So this is uh, much like how you make a mini album, um, cover for a mini album, if that's what you like doing. I, I do. I've got some um, SVG files on my, at my in my Etsy store uh, for making different types of mini albums, if you're interested in that. I also have some playlists on YouTube um, that you could have a look at. If you enjoy um, memory keeping and paper crafting, so I'm just going to go around the edge with my bone folder and flatten that because I think that just makes it look really nice. I'm just going to do the same on here. Just gives it a nice professional finish. Same down there. And then this one. And then that is my cover done. So now I'm just going to run my bone folder along those little bits there and make sure that they are well stuck down and that they bend okay. This one's been a bit difficult. There we go. Okay, so now we can just take our A3 um, wrap, inside wrap, and it's going to go down like so. So. I'm just going to cover this one in glue. Run that down along there, all the way along here. I'm also going to run a bit of glue down my spine and particularly on the sides at the top and the bottom because they like to sort of buckle if they don't have enough glue there. So let's hope that's enough. Right, now I'm going to try and stick this down <laughs> neatly. Not too bad. Looks good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's stick it. Whew. I usually get a bit of a pickle when I do that. i run my profile across and make sure that it's really nice adhered. Push a bit of glue out there. Oop. Okay. So I can see my glue through there, but hopefully when it dries, you won't be able to see it. So I'm just going to find that where that um, crook at uh, that um, fold line is. And it is buckling there. What do you know? Even when you try to avoid it, you can't. And this one here. That's good. That one's not bad. It's just a bit icky up here. But I can fix that up later. Okay, so there's our cover. So we can just pop that to the side now and let it dry. And we can start making the little box section. So that's all the pieces that we have left here. So I will just pull out the pieces that we need to start with. Pull those mats and bits to the side. So we have the D1, which is the base of our box. And then these um, form the sides of our box, our E1 and our F1. So we need one D, one, two E ones and two F ones. And I'm going to start by um, putting my F ones, which are these little ones, onto here. So to do that, I don't know if you can see, because I haven't inked this up, but how about if I do that quickly so we can see that one. That's actually going to, this um, has got this little skinny section here and then a tab, and that's the bit that we want to attach to D1 like this. And so I'm just going to grab some glue and run it along my tab. And that's probably too much glue. It really does like to come out quickly. And so I'm just going to attach that up into that first little crease line and press it down along there. 
So if I flip it over, you can see that this this little um, skinny little section here is not attached to my D1. Okay. So I'm going to do the other side exactly the same way. So I'll just flip that around. And again, I've got this. I'm going to just quickly put some ink on there so you can see that one so this is the piece this tab here is the piece that we're going to attach so this is actually the, going to be the bottom of the box and we're only attaching um, just the tab not this section here to the bottom so let's go ahead and do that I might swap glue and Press that down, make sure that's well pressed and in place. So then we have this funny piece that looks like this. So we've got the two short sides attached. Now we can do the same with the long side. And again, this is exactly the same as those short sides. I just haven't inked this bit up. So we're going to attach this tab here to the bottom of the box, uh, but not this this long skinny piece that's not going to be attached here, just the tab. So I'm going to put some glue on that tab. And then this piece here slides under the box and attaches at the side here. And you'll see that this um, section here lines up with um, quite nicely with the little section that's cut out for it. So it will look like so. I'm just going to press that down. And I'm going to use my bone for a good press. And I'm going to do the same with this one. So again, I'm just attaching the tab, not the little short or skinny piece. That little skinny piece is going to poke out here like so. And I'm going to slide that under there like that. And attach that. And it should... sitting there quite nicely not bad okay I'm just gonna branch that one down right so now we have um, our little box that looks like that I'm just gonna swap glues I'm gonna use this uh, other glue because I'm hoping it won't come out so much this is crafters choice craft glue it's one of those ones with acetone or acetate whatever it is in it Okay, so now we're going to fold these over and attach them down. So this tab here, I'm going to push out um, outwards like so. And these two little first tabs here, they're going to get in our way to start with. So we're just going to fold it all up together like so. I'm going to put some glue. It's not going to come out too fast. Well, I lied. put some of this glue on here you could use any glue that you like and you could use um, double-sided tape if you prefer so now this piece here I'm going to bend over and I'm going to attach it um, from this um, crease here is going to line up with where the edge of this D1 piece is so I'm just going to slide that in like so and pull it down make sure that it's lined up with that side and that side so if you can see that, I don't want to, um, I don't want to rust, um, move it about too much, but it forms that little channel under there, and we've so we've lined up that edge of the tab with the edge of this D1 piece. So we're going to do exactly the same here. So I'll just turn it around this way. I'm going to put these two little tabs in for now, just so they don't get in our way. And fold this tab up like so, so it looks like that. Put some glue on there. And then I'm going to line it up with the edge of this D1. Line the, the tab, that fold line or that crease line up with the edge of the D1 so that I'm happy with that. I can't see it from where I am. Okay, and then just press it down. I'm not too worried about that glue seeping out because I am going to cover it up with a mat. Okay, so now we're going to do exactly the same thing with this 
these E pieces, but I'm just going to pull these tabs out so they don't get in our way. And then I'm going to fold this tab out the ways like we did for that other F1 piece and apply glue. Oh, did you see that big, big that came out? Oh my goodness. Right, well that side should stick pretty well. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to line up this, this crease line here or the edge of that tab with the edge of this D1 piece here as best I can. So let's fold that over. I'm hoping you can see this on camera. And see if that's in line and it is. Well, as best as I can do anyway. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to fold the tab out the way like so. I'm going to apply glue to that tab. And then I'm going to make sure that these little things aren't in the way here. I'm going to fold this over and line that tab up, the edge of that tab up with the edge of the D1 piece that we're sticking to. Well, I'm trying. And that should be okay. How's that? Not bad. So now we pretty much have our little box in place. We just need to attach the tabs. So these tabs are just going to hold it all into place nicely. So all I'm going to do is do my best to line up those two corners like so. And this is the tricky part as far as I'm concerned. Right. And then I'm just going to fold that over and hold that tab down for a minute. You could use a hot glue gun, but I'm a wimp and I always burn my fingers. So I'm just going to try and exercise a little bit of patience to hold that down. And I'm going to go all the way around the edges and do the same thing. So I'm going to try and line that up. Put some glue on that tab. You could also use um, double-sided tape for, on these little tabs if that helps. I'm just going to hold that in place for a second and hope that that's pretty lined up. It's okay. I've seen better, I've seen worse. But we have this little, uh, little bit here that goes over the top, so hopefully that'll neaten up anything that doesn't look too perfect. And that glue just doesn't want to hold. Come on. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same all the way around. So these two. Hold that down. It's like watching paint dry. And this last outside flip, flap, tap, whatever you want to call it. Oh, that's a lot of glue. Try and line that up nicely. So then we have all four of our outside tabs held together. And glued down. And you can see my box isn't perfect. But you know, what, whatever it is that's handmade. But I really love this, this edge. I think it looks really nice and neat. And so then these inside tabs, I'm just applying glue to them. And they are then stuck from down to that long side there. And that's just holding that corner in nice and neatly and making it really um, firm. So I'm going to do that all the way around. So those pieces are um, from the, on the little short side. So they're going to attach to the long side. And just put some glue on there and then hold it for a second. And the same on this one. And stick that one down. And since the glue just doesn't want to hold that one in place for some reason, never fear, I'm going to put a mat over it. So 
this last one, putting a bit of glue on that tab and then I'm going to just push that in and hold it for a second. And that's our, basically our little box done. Then all we need to do is attach our mat. So to start with I've got this little one that's going to go on top. Oh, I don't know which glue to use. Let's go with this one again. And that tab's come off. My glue's not playing today. It's a bit warm and sticky here. And I'd really love to have the air con or the fan on, but it makes too much noise. Oh, okay, so come on. Just gonna put some glue around the edges here. Probably way too much. And across here. And then this is our little D3 piece. And that's just going to sit on top and make that look quite nice and finished. Well, at least I think it does. Right, and then when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to get rid of that excess glue. Make sure that it's stuck on the way that I'd like it to be. I mean, it's not perfect. And you could take more time with it and make it look more perfect. Um, but I don't know that anyone would even notice. Look, see, look at that. I think that looks really smashing. Okay, and then we just have all our, um, our mats to put on. So for each side, there are two longer mats and two shorter mats. So the shorter ones go on the inside. So in this case, these short, short. The, long, the shorter of the longer ones, if that makes any sense, will go on the inside. So that's the E3 mat. So we have two of those and they are for the long side inside our box, like so. Sorry, I know you can't see this, but I shall show you. So there you see that one goes on there. And we'll do the same with this one. You could use any paper you want. You could you could um, you could make your own sort of mixed media papers up to mount it with. You could do a mixed media cover. This is just the most basic um, example that I can show you, and then whatever you want to do with it. The sky's the limit. And then so these longer ones go on the outside long edges. And pop that down and line those up and that seems pretty good to me and the same with this one so the way you make up this box here is the same for whether you make the square um, or flat spine but, uh, cover or whether you make the rounded spine cover. It's completely up to you which cover you make but the, the way you make the little box that goes in it is exactly the same for both. So then we have the short side mat. So the shorter of the short sides <laughs> go on the inside. I'm sure there's a better way to explain that. So this is the F2 pieces. So they go on the inside like so. like so, if you can see that. And the same on this one. And pop that in there. Really quite easy. You know, if you get your cutting machine to cut all the pieces out for you, then, um, and with the Cricut, I, and I'm not sure how it works with other cutting machines, but with the Cricut, of course, it also does the scoring for you as well. So there's absolutely no measuring uh, or cutting or scoring. Everything's been done for you. And you can make these little cute little gift boxes or they'd be great for um, Valentine's Day, which is coming up. You can put some chockies in it or... Uh, you know, movie tickets and some chocolates or um, whatever you like. And they don't have to be all flowery. Um, I made this one, which is really quite um, 
fine and m sort of masculine. Of course, you could decorate it so much more than I have. I just I wanted to show you that they could just be just as nice, um, plain, and you know, m still make lovely little gift boxes. Okay, so then we just have the mat to go in the bottom, and that is the D2 mat. So we're just going to pop that in the bottom. Glue and it'll just slide in like so. Let me just make sure it's fairly lined up. I can't see all that well at the moment. Um, so I'm just getting that excess glue out with my wipe here. And that's it, that's the box. Now it's a little bit wonky because it, I should have used the other glue. Oh, with this paper because it's made the paper bu buckle a bit but I think once it's dry it will be fine. So let's bring our cover back and I have to decide which is the front and which is the back. I feel like that's the front. So then all we do is just put some glue on uh, the back of our box and attach it. So let's just do that. And there's also so many ways that you could create little closures for this and I have just gone with the easiest option which is um, a bit of ribbon but I think it makes it look pretty. So then I'm just kind of sort of decide where I want that. If it's um, centered this way, um, if it's not sitting too close to my spine, make sure that I can close it over. And then I'm just going to give it a bit of a push. Not too much because I don't want to break it. Wipe that glue off all the way around. Like so. And that's it. And then we just close it up and we have our little box. Now we could attach the little clasp, make a little clasp to attach on here. Or I'm going to use some ribbon on this one because it's so pretty. But so, but that's how you make that the square or the flat spine box. And I thought I'd just show you how to do the cover for the round one. So we just did that in next to no time. And I just think it's so cute. So I'll put that one to the side and I'll quickly pull out this little book again so I can show you the pieces that are cut out to make the cover for the next one. So, this is, now we're doing the round spine. So, it's my, it's my example, just here. So, this little, this little round spine here, if you prefer that one, then we're just going to make um, the cover for that one. Okay, so, for this one we need, uh, again, two of the A1 pieces. So, uh, I don't Two of the A1 pieces here, and again, I've cut those out of card um, chipboard. You could use um, cereal boxes or whatever you like. And this time, instead of a B1, I've cut out two of the C1s, and that's these here. I'm sorry they're in black, but they have score lines uh, running down them, and I've cut out two of those out of black cardstock. And then I have cut out the a4, I've cut out two of the A4s and there are these ones here and there are outside um, covers and then two of the A5s and there for the inside covers. So we have those there. And then finally for this one I've cut out two of the H1s which are the little clasps and that's those two here. And there is a, a mat for that which is H2 but I'm not going to use the mat. I'm just going to keep them black because I have such a busy cover. I think the black would just look better. So that's my decision. So I'll put all that to the side. And, oh, I forgot about that one. We'll do that in a minute. Okay, so for this one, this time, uh, what we're going to do is wrap these two individually and then join them together. So these are my... What did I say they were? A somethings. A4s, I think, and these are the A5s. So the A4s are going to be what we cover these um, on the front. So, and all we're going to do is attach, 
just put some glue on here and attach these to the center and we're just wrapping them pretty much like what we did with the first cover but this time we're wrapping the pieces individually so i'm just going to lay that down on there like so make sure it's well stuck down i really like this paper so pretty i'll just do the same with this one here I really hope I'm recording. <laughs> and I'll stick that one down on here. And stick that one down nice and firmly as well. Okay, and then we're just going to trim around these edges with my manky scissors again. And I'm going to uh, glue this, these up in the same way that I did before. So I might put it on fast forward or just skip over it all together so you don't have to watch every single moment of this. Okay, I have finished attaching the outside wraps um, for both of the front and the back here and now I just need to attach the inside uh, mat which is this piece here and so I'm just going to put some glue on over here and attach those or attach that, line it up. Like so, push, make sure it's well attached, like, like so. Right, of course you should take more time about it than I am. And I've already done this one so to save a bit of time. So now I'm just going to try and decide which one's my front. And I feel like, I mean it's non-directional paper. I think I think that's my front and then so this is going to be my back so uh, I'll just put those to the side like that so I don't forget now all I need to do now is attach my uh, round spines together so these are my round spines and what I'm going to do is fold in each of those longest uh, edges on those spines uh, And attach those two together with glue. I'm just going to put that down there and run some glue across here. Way too much glue, probably. Oops, it's coming up. I'm going to do some of that and then I'm going to line this up. Might pay to open this one out so it's flat. I'm just going to attach that between those two uh, score lines top and bottom. Make sure that I'm happy with how it's lined up. I have my fingers are absolutely covered in glue. And when I'm happy with that, a good press. Ah, glue everywhere. Never mind, it comes off. And that seems pretty good top and bottom to me. Okay, I'll try to get some glue off my fingers, but uh, it's well stuck on. So now, I'm just going to fold back one of those flaps, and all we're going to do is put some glue on this side and this side, slide our uh, front cover in, and then glue it down like so, trying to even it, um, evenly um, space it. So I'm going to do that here. Like so, and slide 
that in there and push that um, edge over, push it down and make sure it's really well attached. Oops, not very even Katie. See if I've got time to slide, I don't think I do. Oh well. I've, uh, I've not attached it very well here, but you do you do a better job than me, but you get the idea. And you know, I can put a bit of lace or something on there, uh, or ribbon to, to make that not so noticeable. I can fix that, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Okay, so some glue on here. And I'm gonna do the same here. Slide that in, fold it over, press it down. Might pay to see if they're even. This one needs to slide down a bit. My glue is too quick for me though. I've barely touched it and it is stuck. Oh well, I can fix it and cover it up. That glue is super sticky. So I should have lined that up better so it was even on the top and the bottom. But you get the idea. So there we have our rounded spine. Ta -da. So for this one I'm going to use the little uh, attachments. And so I'm just going to put a... Uh, now I prefer to use two, I just think it makes it a bit stronger. So I just attach glue two together and make sure they're lined up which I haven't been doing a great job of today but never mind the idea is that you see how that all the pieces go together and then you go away and do a much better job right seems okay covered in glue so now this is my back and I want to attach it to the outside back. And you could do so many things with this in terms of um, using brads and making it look really fabulous but I'm not doing that at the moment. But I do want you to know that you can do that. So I've just found um, my halfway point just to, or the middle, just to give me an idea of the best place for it. Put a bit of glue on here and I'm just going to sort of attach it there like so. Maybe slide it in a little bit so that glue is not sticking out. Like that. Make sure it's... Oh, see? It's wonky. There we go. You get the idea. Right. So that's our back. And then I have already made the box for this one, just so we didn't have to go through all of that again. But obviously I made it exactly the same way as I did for the other box. So then I'm just going to glue this on as well. Like so. Again, I'm just going to flip this round so I can sort of line it up because my lining up skills are so crash hot today Whoop. and make sure it's not sitting too close to my spine give it a press wipe the glue up the excess glue pressing it but not too hard you know just uh, making sure it's contacting in all the right places and and then we close her up and i'm going to make that look pretty Oh, I forgot about the um, little card, so, and I didn't do it for the other one, so I'm just going to attach that there like so. I really love this paper with this black, it just looks so, um, so intense and bold. I'm going to pop that on here like so. And so a little card can go in there if I want to. Love that. 
yeah. it. Okay, so then that folds over now. I want to get this to fold over, so I'm just going to push it um, along here. And if it doesn't want to work for you, just give it a little burnish with a bone folder. And then making sure this is the box is lined up. And then just doing the same here and giving that burnish across here across here and then I'm going to use a little velcro dot to hold that down but I didn't bring them to the table with me so that's the round um, spine and I really really dig this color I th and black just always looks so amazing anyway for this one I forgot to show you how to make that little pocket so it's just this G1 piece here and the mat goes on top, so let's do that. So the actual piece itself is G1 and the mat is G2. I can't decide which way it should go, but it pops on like so. And then we just fold these tabs in and put some glue on those. I'm running out of glue. And this one at the side here and then just bend those over and line it up and press it down and that's that's like a little pocket that you can then pop in the front here so we can do that right now come on Okay, so I am going to switch over to my computer now and give you a super quick little demo of how to uh, download the files and, well not so much how to download the files, but how to, to manipulate them, make sure your score lines are there once you've downloaded them um, and uploaded them to Picket. So there we go, there's our two little boxes that we just made, they just need some cute little embellishments but that's it, so I'll be with you at the computer in just a minute, thanks. Okay so here we are at my computer and as you'll see I'm currently sitting in my downloads folder. So when you uh, go to the Bella Creativa um, group page, Bella Creativa Divas Facebook group page, and you go to the files, you should find a file called Bella Book Box, which is just here, and download that from the Facebook page. And when I do that, it comes to my downloads folder here that you can see. So what we need to do though is extract the files from this zip folder. So I've just clicked on that. Um, and it comes up and shows you that there are one, two, three, four, five, six files, plus this one up the top, which is a PDF, which is that little file that I told you about that will have the uh, screenshots of each of the picture of each of the files. Plus, it will also have the little cutting guide. So, what we need to do is go up here to extract all and click on extract all. And I clicked on it too quickly. Let's do that again and select the destination that it's going to. It's still going to my downloads and it's going to be a Bella Book Box. So click Extract and it's done it already for me because I have this new Butte computer. So now I can see that I have one, two, th all of those files ready to go. So now if I go over to my Cricut Design Space and this is the only way that I know how to uh, show you how to do it, but hopefully if you don't have Cricut you can apply these principles to whatever uh, electronic cutting machine you have. So I'm going to go over here to the left hand side and click on upload and then I'm going to click on upload image and click on browse and it's I'm going to navigate my way back to my downloads folder here and I can see that I have 
uh, one zip file called Bella Book Book Box and then I have underneath it this other one that's not zipped so I'm going to click on that and open that and then I'm going to ignore the PDF but I'm going to go to the next one down Bella Books Box Cover and click on that and click open and this is what it looks like here upload image it says book box cover and then I'm going to go down there and click save and I'm going to go back and click choose the next one box elements and click open and click save go back again click upload image click browse go back to that um, file folder click the next one down box max click open click save click upload image again click browse again choose the next one round spine inside and outside cover click open comes up here click save again upload image browse next one down square spine inside cover click open click save and for my last one click upload image click browse and choose the last one square spine outside cover click open and click save now I'm going to take all of those ones that I've just uploaded uh, one two three four five six that's the one of the six files that I've just uh, uploaded onto the Cricut Design Space and then I'm going to click insert images and they'll all come up on my canvas here. Now I'm going to go down to the left hand side here and zoom out so that I can easily see all of my pieces and then I'm just going to move them around and spread them out so that I can see those nice and easily. Put all those, oops, I wanted the pink one, put all those pink ones over there I don't need to do anything with those, but I do need to do some things with these green ones. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is click this group up here and go over to the layers panel on the right hand side and click ungroup. And now this piece here, I don't need to do anything to. The spine piece next to it, I don't need to do anything to. But this one here, which is our piece that we use for the round um, spine, we need to change these lines here to score lines. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. There we go. These individual lines here, we need to change them from cut lines to score lines. So then if we go over to the layers panel on the right hand side, we can see that the piece that we're looking at here, book box cover, um, is highlighted. We're going to click on this one here, that these lines here that say cut. Click on that. And we're going to go all the way back over to the left hand side and up the top here where it says line type and click on that drop down box and change that from cut to score and we can see that those lines have changed to dotted lines now we need to go back over and this is really important and click on that whole piece again now we know it's this piece here with the little arrow so if i click on that it will highlight the green piece itself plus those score lines I'm going to go down the bottom of the layers panel and click attach. So now those lines, those score lines are attached to that piece. So we need to do the same for this piece, um, for some of the pieces in this file here. So again, I'm going to go over to the left hand side and click on group. And then I'm going to go to this piece here that has got some of these internal lines. And that's the little gift um, a little gift card pocket and I'm going to go over to the layers panel click on those um, highlighted cut um, lines there that say cut just click on that highlight those go back up to line type on the left click score go back over and click that whole little piece um, with that arrow there and it highlights those score lines and the piece itself that those score lines are on go back down to the bottom and click on attach and that's that one done we're going to do the same for these two pieces here which are those pieces that we use to make the box so we're going to click on those cut lines slide across to the line type change it from cut to score go back and highlight that little piece where that little arrow is and click attach and then I'm going to do the same with this last piece here click on those cut lines go across to line type change it from cut 
to score, go back up into the layers panel, click on that piece where that arrow is, making sure that I've got both the score lines and the cut piece itself, and click down here on attach, and that's it. So now if I just go back out again, scroll up so we can see everything, I am going to just pull everything over so it's nice and neat like so and they're all the pieces that I need to make either the round um, spine box or the square spine box so I'm just going to go up here and um, on the right hand side at the top in that grey strip click on save and I'm going to call it book box and then click save and that's my project done I don't need to do I'll say the cloud and the computer and click apply. So I don't need to make any changes to that now. If I want to make this book box, I can um, I can go right from here. I don't need to change any of those um, cut lines to score lines. But what about if I want to make it bigger or smaller? I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on select all. And then I can come down to this arrow and I can drag it in or out to make it as big or as small as I like just like that. My recommendation would be if you're going to do that then you should um, save it again so this time I'd say whoops no we're not playing click on save and I'd say save as and I'd say book box large because I've just made it bigger and click save so that I still have the original size and now I have a larger size I could do it again I could say select all and I could make it smaller and then I would save it again, save as book box and this time I'll change it to small and click save. And of course I would um, probably spend a bit more time thinking about which actual size they are before I, I save them but this is just an example for you. So if you're um, interested in making these gift boxes head over to my Facebook group uh, uh, Bella Creativa Divas. I'll put the link in the description box so you can go straight over and send me your request to join the group and then you'll find these files in the files section of the Facebook group page and I hope you make lots of cute little boxes and if you do post pictures of them on the Facebook group page so that we can all see what you've done. So thanks very much for your time today and give me a thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe, all of those things that people always ask you to do and I hope I see you guys again soon. Thank you. Bye.